Hey guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. I, I love you guys a lot and I hope you enjoyed conference. Hi. Hey guys, Dave here coming to you from my living room. This was one of the most incredible general conferences I have ever experienced. Oh my gosh, I loved it so much. Um, I absolutely loved the focus on the restoration of the gospel. Um, I love that it was just a constant thread throughout almost every single message. There was some kind of reference towards the restoration. And um, I feel like I know the different events of the restoration pretty well. But what I really liked about it was that it was a new understanding or a new perspective on these different events. I love how they were applied to our modern day um, struggles and experiences now um, in a way that I just felt so grateful for Joseph Smith and all those who were involved in the restoration. And I love the reminder that, you know, it was a big sacrifice and we should be very grateful that we have the Book of Mormon now and we have temple ordinances um, and everything that has come forth since the restoration. So I loved that. Um, also, I obviously loved any time President Nelson went up to speak. Oh my gosh, he is the most incredible man. Um, and I really loved his message Sunday morning. Um, and I loved his reminder that in times of uncertainty or fear, the best thing that we can do and what Heavenly Father wants us to do is to hear his son. Um, and I loved his reminder that we need to make an intentional effort in hearing him instead of just like bumping into it on social media, like he mentioned. And that's something that I definitely want to work on more because, you know, we get so caught up in the day to day. Sometimes it's difficult to remember why we're here and the sacrifice that the Savior made when he completed his atonement for us. And um, I feel like, like I said, it's just so easy to get caught up on things in life and forget what our purposes really are. So I really appreciated that reminder. And that's definitely something that I've been praying for now since conference has been over is just that extra guidance and reminder to hear him. And especially with it being Holy Week and celebrating Easter all throughout this week with the church's Hear Him campaign. If you guys aren't signed up for the text alerts, you need to. They are so good so far. Um, where basically each morning you get a message from the church with a different reminder of how to hear him that day with a video of the Bible videos with Jesus. And oh my gosh, they're so good. So anyway, that has been really helpful for me this week. And I really hope to continue um, this pattern of just living a Christ-centered life throughout the rest of my life. And I will always remember back to this general conference and the ways that I felt um, and just the gratitude that I felt for our savior and also for all of our living prophets and apostles and for the guidance that we have. Oh my gosh, we're so lucky to know about, you know, modern day revelation and especially in times like this. So I hope you guys are all healthy. Hope you're all doing well. I definitely miss all my saints and scripted hosts and our crew and I hope I can see you guys soon. But for now, stay safe and have a great Easter. Man, conference. It's a little hard because what stuck out to me from conference was not any one particular talk, but it's like a feeling. I mean, there were some talks that stuck out to me more than others, like all of President Nelson's, Jeffrey R. Holland's, of course, and L. Whitney Clayton, to be honest. But it was the theme of conference that really, really drove it home for me. The theme to hear him. I love that in spite of focusing on the restoration, the root of the messages was not, look at Joseph Smith, he's so cool, but the message was to be like Joseph Smith by hearing the Savior. And me personally, especially in the priesthood session, I was really reminded that I'm a father now and I have responsibilities. When I was a missionary, I had this idea of what kind of dad I was going to be and what I was going to do and whatever. And I think over time I just sort of lost that. 
and I got it back from conference. Desires to lead out and preside and to counsel and to pray for my children and receive revelation about them, to be one with God in guiding our family through whatever we need to go through. Well, I have set a few goals to get to where I want to be as a father. Number one is I need to make consecrated time for scripture study because I have not been very good at that lately. Secondly, that scripture study needs to be centered on come follow me because frankly, I struggled with come follow me for a really long time and I haven't touched it in like a year. And so I need to get back into that. And third, I need to really pray and communicate with my Heavenly Father. One of my favorite statements from Joseph Smith, he said, Thy mind, O man, if thou wilt lead a soul to salvation, must stretch as high as the utmost heavens and search into and contemplate the darkest abyss. Thou must commune with God. And if I want to be the kind of father that I want to be, I need to commune with God a little more. I need to hear him. Thanks for watching. I hope you were able to tune into conference and I hope that you were able especially to hear him yourself. And I hope that you're able to continue to hear him. Peace. I hope your general conference was awesome. I know it was for my wife, Kenna, and I. Uh, we, we loved it. It was something unlike anything we've ever experienced. Hopefully it was for you as well. At first I was a little bit nervous because it's the bicentennial uh, celebration or, or, or conference of, or, we're celebrating the restoration. And I was a little bit nervous that for people that weren't members of our faith watching, it would be a little bit um, Joseph Smith worshipy. Because a lot of people have the impression that, that we worship Joseph Smith, uh, which isn't true. But the confusion is understandable when it comes to like hymns, like praise to the man and stuff like that, which I'm not a huge fan of personally. Um, so I was a little nervous going into, into this conference um, that people would get kind of a false impression of us. But I was very uh, happily surprised with the way it went. Um, I, I loved the, the talks that kind of got into the history a little bit uh, of the restoration. And I loved seeing, you know, that page from the uh, original manuscript of the Book of Mormon. That was really impactful to me. I really appreciated those talks, but I also really appreciated how how focused on Christ everything was, you know? Did you guys get that impression? I just, yes, there's all this great restoration stuff, but our focus is Jesus Christ. And I really loved how much they emphasized that, um, especially with the new symbol of the church, with, with uh, the Christus over the name of the church in the archway, and that was really cool. I think that, I don't know, I, I, if you see like the faith and beliefs videos that I do, I do a lot of kind of answering tough questions type stuff. I delve into really deep historical issues, but this conference, especially with, you know, the Hosanna shout and stuff that we did, um, and singing the spirit of God and that choir number at the end. Oh, I loved that. But I really just liked I just really got the impression that, like, yes, there's all this great history stuff to study, but really, I'm just here to worship Christ. And that's what being a Latter-day Saint is all about. That's what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is all about. And I felt a spiritual confirmation that that, that worship was acceptable to God, you know? And that was really special to me. And, and, and uh... And it was a great conference. So General Conference was just amazing. And I agree. And I um, just want to testify of everything that everyone else has shared. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit about what I felt for the talks that were, were given. 
the biggest thing that stood out for me is is the um that the lord loves effort the lord loves effort i think that really hit me in a special spot because there's so many lies that Satan gives that we like um, the idea that you can get somewhere for nothing or get something for not nothing, get rich quick. Like if you think of all of the greatest sins and addictions in the world, the, the lie that they tell you is that um, if you do drugs, you'll feel really, really good in the moment. You'll feel something that's so awesome. And that that like all it takes is just taking a drug you know or if you gamble you could win all the money in the world and all it takes is like one like flip of a coin or whatever if you um have sex before marriage that you'll feel the satisfaction like sexual satisfaction and you don't have to put in any of the effort of a real relationship like there's just every sin has that underlying theme of here you can have everything that everybody wants but you don't have to work for it but the truth is that none of those things last like with drugs, you, you crash and it ruins your life. And then um, gambling is it becomes an addiction. And how many people actually win, you know, the money? Well, nobody. The house always wins. And, and with sex before marriage, like that the the relationship is what makes sex special. The having a strong relationship of love, a spiritual relationship with your spouse, that's what makes sex amazing. You know, outside of it, it's like pleasurable, but it's not lasting. So it just hit me so hard that the Lord loves effort, not because he is some cruel taskmaster who wants us to work hard so that he can just watch us suffer. But it's because he understands that true joy, that true happiness requires effort. God loves us and allows us to face trials knowing that that's what will bring us true, eternal, lasting joy he he went through it and he knows it and he's allowing us to go through it ourselves and that's hard that is hard it's easy to give someone whatever they want like that is easy that you see those parents who who give their kids whatever they want because they don't have to deal with the problems like oh my kid's sad i'll just buy stuff for him so that i don't have to talk to him and actually like solve whatever issues he's having like it's easy to be that kind of parent um, the results will never bring satisfaction or joy. But true joy is hard because it's worth it. And so I just love that. Like, And the other thing from conference, just real quick, that I, that I really, really found special is that they shared from the messages from the Sacred Grove and then from the um, house. Oh, I, forget, I think it was a Joseph Smith house. I don't remember where, where President Nelson talked to... Um, the sister who spoke, I'm terrible with names and my notes are very incomplete, but um, President Nelson told her that Joseph Smith went to pray in the forest because he was following the example of his mother because she went to the forest to pray. And I didn't know that. I'd never heard that before, but President Nelson shared it and it just hit me so in such a special spot because like mothers are so important. Children watch their mothers and learn from their mothers and and just like I'm married now and my wife Taylor will be a mother someday and I'm just so excited for my kids to get to have her as a mother because they will learn so much from her but I, that just was so special I just brought, I brought t chills and tears to think that Joseph Smith like his mother played such a crucial role in the restoration of the gospel and that that was something that really special that, uh, that I felt this conference too I, I love you guys a lot and I hope you enjoyed conference and, and I hope you continue to watch and listen to the talks that were given. Um, yeah, well, so we'll see you guys later.